Hi everybody, this is Jelisa. Thank you so much everybody for coming back to my channel. Thank you so much to everybody who's listening in the podcast right now. It is Sunday, October 27, 2024. I wanted to come here and speak to you guys about an incident, an unfortunate incident that happened um, this week and this time it happened in Minneapolis. But before I continue, I want to say thank you so much to everybody who listens to the podcast on Spotify. Thank you so much for following me on Spotify also want to say thank you to everybody who's listening uh, excuse me using apple Podcasts and youtube thank you so to the youtube subscribers i do want to say something real quick for the youtube subscribers um i just added my my store so you'll be able to see what <laughs> julissa designs really in titles like um was what why is this podcast named julissa designs you get to see in the store, the reason, I guess you can say behind it. But um, let me just tell you guys, excuse me, about this story. Because when I read this, I tell you guys that um, your life can change at any moment. That's what I always say, you know. Um, the other thing is also that as the world is becoming what it's becoming, right? There's a lot of stress, a lot of financial stress, a lot of people losing their businesses, uh, companies closing. People losing their jobs. The economy is just skyrocketing. I went grocery shopping today and it's just, it's, it's crazy. The prices are going crazy, you know, and it's just like, wow. Um, wow. And, you know, they, they're cutting a lot of, um, a lot of funds that they, they get to people who have less money. So it's just, you know, not to bring any type of fear, but I'm saying like once you see it, it's like wow, what is going on? Why is it like that? And then even if you order food out, even if you go and order food, you're still paying so much money, and the portions get smaller and all of that stuff. Um, before you be able to um order food and you know have lunch and dinner with that order, because the portions in the economy is so bad, they are trying businesses are struggling so much so they're charging you more and giving you less and we can all see that right we've been seeing it for a couple i guess for a few months now right i think right before the summer too but okay so the story for today you guys is a, a unfortunate incident a neighbor uh almost killed his other neighbor okay and the reason that i i this story caught my eye besides the fact that it's very tragic it's so it's it's a hate crime number, you know, number one. It's tragic. And also, um, the crazy thing about this story is that the police were already aware that there is a situation that was happening, right? Um, what a nightmare would be for anybody to buy their home. Like, that's one of my my biggest thing because um, I'm, I'm very sensitive to noise. And um, if if you're spending so much money to buy your own place, right, and you come home and like perhaps you have um neighbors that they let their kids play outside until like 10 p.m and you perhaps you know you want to uh check in early i guess you can say to um get ready for a job early in the morning there's a lot of people who work overnight at hospitals and things like that and then you spend you're buying a house you spend so much money and then you get the neighbors that just don't want to uh don't want to be neighborly to you, right? They, um, they're they rude, you know, you complain about noises and they continue to do it, even like on purpose to annoy you. And that takes some type of um, human mentality for somebody to know that somebody said, hey, I have a problem, like your noise is waking me up, you know, early in the morning. What you're doing is causing me anxiety and things like that. Yeah, you get yourself um you're humble yourself when you go express what's going on and instead of them doing something about it they actually get worse right there's people who do that a lot of people who be, uh, who live in apartment buildings deal with something like that and you know it's almost like somebody um taking your parking spot and you already they already know that belongs to you they already know that's your assigned parking. They continue to do it on purpose. That takes some type of humankind, right? <laughs> that is crazy. Like, there are people who get their pride out of stupid stuff like that, right? Instead of having an opportunity to be nice to somebody, 
and act like a human, like a, a normal person. They they do crazy stuff like that. So this story is about um, a white Minneapolis man was charged with attempt murder this past Thursday after allegedly shooting his black neighbor in the neck for touching a tree following an ongoing dispute. But the failure of police to arrest the suspect has angered city council members. I saw a press conference that the police did about this, and it was shocking for me, to be honest. It was shocking for me to see, I don't know who it was, it was um, the police chief or somebody was speaking, saying how they're they're not going to go and bust the door open and arrest somebody. Like, isn't that what police normally do? When they have a warrant for somebody, they go to their house. And basically, if they don't want to open the door, they f- go forcibly um, go in the house and take that person to, you know, to and arrest that person. This police um, chief, that's why people are anger, uh, angry in the community, because it's, it was already a known issue. Okay. Um, and the police is saying, we went to the suspect's house uh, numerous times. And he never opened the wanted to open the door. And at times we didn't know if he was even there. Like, what type of weak police activity is that? Like, who's paying? Like, it makes you think, like, who's paying these people to do something like that, right? So it says here that the Hennepin County Attorney's Office filed charges against John Herbert in connection with the Wednesday shooting of Davis uh, Moturi. The office say he received the case on Thursday and immediately charged um, the suspect with attempted murder, first degree assault, and felony harassment and stalking. Enhanced, says here, for racial bias. At the time of the shooting, the suspect had three active warrant arrests against him, including one for threat of violence against his neighbor and other doc- and three warrant arrests for um, violence against his neighbors. It shows in some of the documents. Like, what? But since when? Like, it's laughable because it's so ridiculous. Since when, guys? If they have a warrant for your arrest, since when? They're going to show up to your house and you're going to be like, I'm not opening the door. And they're like, okay, we'll come back tomorrow. Like, you, there is a warrant for your arrest. And this police chief is trying to justify why they didn't, they didn't post the door and went in to get the suspect. Like, that, that's crazy. Something else is going on here. There's definitely some type of cover-up or something else going on here. For this couple who bought their house, right? I think it was December of 2023. And they immediately began having issues with this neighbor. Harassment, stalking, and they, you know, like I said, the police were aware of what was going on. And then the suspect had three warrants for his arrest. The police is saying, we're not going to just post in and arrest the guy. I look, like I don't understand what that is. So, as of Saturday, as of yesterday, he would, the suspect who who almost killed his neighbor, he has not been arrested by the Minneapolis police. Okay, on Wednesday, Maury was pruning a tree on his property when he was shot. There's a video of this whole thing, right? Like you're doing your thing in your house. And you have a dispute with your neighbor. There's a warrant for his arrest. You're just being in your safe place, doing your thing, your backyard, you know, taking care of trees. And out of nowhere, your neighbor's going to come and shoot you in the neck. Obviously, he was trying to basically kill this guy. Thank God he survived, okay? Like, it's crazy, you guys. So, the David Motoris. The um the victim here says he had a fracture his spine, had two broken ribs and a concussion, and 
there's the police is saying that they want the community to remain safe, but they're still looking for um for the suspect in this case. It says here that officers responded to the hospital over reports of gunshot victim. Maturi told them that his neighbor has threatened to shoot him if he touched a specific tree. While Maturi was co- cutting the tree, he was shot. So imagine, like, like, did you have somebody training you? Basically, since you move in, right, um, making your life miserable, right, um, stalking you, harassing you, recording you, probably, right, and saying if you touch that tree. I'm going to shoot you. And then the police is aware because there are three warrants for the, that guy's arrest. And it's almost like then they're like, well, we're not going to, we don't even know if he's home yet. And we're not going to bust in and he doesn't want to open the door. What type of cover up is this? They were waiting for something to happen and it did. And look at, look at them now, right? It's so crazy. It says here, based on our assessment, the likelihood of an armed violent confrontation where we may have to use deadly force with the suspect in this case is high. He said he wanted to arrest the suspect where he will be least likely to have access to firearms. And that is outside his residence. So that is their excuse, right? They're basically saying, we didn't want to create another, another scene. We we know this guy has um, firearms, so we wanted to make it as peaceful as possible. I think this is extremely selective, okay? And it's so crazy because this whole case also is 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 basically a hate crime, right? Um, yet the suspect in this whole thing is being treated differently than compared if this was some type of um, you know, if it was the other way around. Let's just say it like that, right? So definitely something's going on. It says here that let me see what else I can tell you about this story. Well, they're still looking for him as of yesterday afternoon. Um, when I was searching about this story, I didn't see that any information that he was already arrested. One thing I'm going to tell you guys is this, right? That there was a GoFundMe created for the victim here. He suffered, like I told you guys, a fractured spine, two broken ribs, and a concussion. And now, probably the uh, the breadwinner in that house, in that home, right, is in the hospital suffering from this. How unfortunate is that? So... For Muturi, I'm going to tell you guys that there's a call for me that the wife created to help the family go through these difficult times. As you guys know, I love call for me because that is a way for us to basically come together. Um, not only to like help, um, to know about the case, right? That's why I'm, I'm always mentioning it. To know about this case and if, you know, uh, pray for this family. And also, if we can, uh, help some somehow um, monetarily um, with, I can't speak to them, sorry, uh, with the donations. That's what I meant to say. So I'm going to put the link here for you guys. And I believe his name is Maturi. That, that's the, um, the other neighbor that got shot. The neighbor that got shot, right? Davis Maturi. Um, so there is a call for me to help this family. And keep the family in your prayers. Also keep the um keep this community in your prayers because right now they're looking for this armed neighbor that is missing now, right? So that's that's scary because um I hope they offer protection to the family, right? Because it's not like they were living like far away. Um I'm sure they're still you know, they're still living in the same house. And now there's a suspect at large that almost tried to kill this man. So that's some scary times for them right now. So keep them in your prayers. And like I said, if there's anything that you can help um, by donating to to the GoFundMe, um, please do so. 
I'm going to put the link here. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming back to my channel. Thank you so much to everybody who's listening to the podcast. Have a good day. God bless.